So we're headed down to see my buddy Nick Pancho. Nick is working on a table and the great thing I love about Nick is that he's a modern woodworker. He uses everything from hand tools to CNC machines and um, he's completely open to using everything. He's got a table, that a side table that he's working on. It's modern design and he he did a texture on it with a CNC machine that his dad has in his shop. So we're gonna go down, visit Nick, and take a look at that table and see what he's done. I'm pretty anxious to share it with you guys. Okay, so we're visiting Nick Pancho and he's got a modern uh, contemporary table and I'm gonna have him tell you about it. And what I love about it, especially is that he's added a texture that he used a CNC to generate. So tell us about it, Nick. Yeah, so this is a piece for a client who really liked uh, some live edge stuff that I was working on. Um, this is a, a piece of live edge uh, box elder that I harvested from my backyard here about five years ago and had my local local uh, sawmill guy uh, cutting slabs for me. Uh, then we dried it here. So um, it, it's really, it's from an artistic standpoint, it's, it's a further explore, exploration of some of these um, box, you know, really simple geometry pieces that I've been working on. And um, and these are the ones you've been selling, right? At like the summer fair and stuff that right, I right, when I visited you. Exactly, okay. exactly. Um, so this one's kind of an exploration of um, this, you know, very natural live edge uh, language interfacing with some really not natural um, CNC and computer generated language. You know, that's cut by yeah. a computer um, from digital models that I'm modeling. Um, I was inspired, you know, by some of the work that Jeff Mark Joyner is doing with actually putting a whole tabletop into a CNC gantry and, you know, using that to cut out some of these patterns and, uh, you know, stitch these tabletops together yeah. that way. And I thought, well, and it's so Jeff Martin Joyner, I, I hadn't heard of him until you mentioned yeah, him. So, yeah. so we'll leave the link to that Jeff Martin Joyner so yeah, we can check out some of the inspiration. Okay. Uh, yeah. So when I saw that, I was like, oh light bulb went on you could I could like put a whole piece of furniture into into the CMC gantry that my dad's been building cool and we could you know start to do some explorations that way so that's kind of how so your started. dad built the the CNC yeah so basically creativity's running in the family here. right yeah okay right right he, he loves the the technical aspects of putting these things together okay and I love you know trying to figure out some really cool things that we can do with them yeah so um, here you know this is modeled this surface this kind of rolling and pitching surface. Yeah, is would, that's pretty cool because it's like an optical illusion to me. Right. Yeah, it's a, it's a quarter inch of depth that we're actually you know removing with the router. Okay. Um, and it's a quarter inch cove bit using a a three sixteenth inch step. Okay. Um, each time, so we're that's pretty over, overcutting the previous by yeah. by a little bit each time. And it's you know the texture itself I, I think is really fascinating because it's a it's kind of a piece that's about <clears throat> these artifacts that are left over from um, both the digital modeling process because it's modeled in SketchUp. Okay. Um, and SketchUp isn't true NURBS modeling, so it's interpolating curved surfaces into triangles. Okay. Um, so we get this, you know, these great triangle patterns as an artifact of when you export that, that file. Uh, from SketchUp to an STL, the stereo lithography file. Okay. Uh, from SketchUp and then bring it in. Uh, and actually machine it, you're getting that curve, curvilinear surface. Mm -hmm. The artifact of that is this triangular surface that you're getting. And so then, that, that's kind of what's interesting right. to me is that basically what most people would find as a fault with using the SketchUp, you've, you're exploiting that yeah. for artistic creativity. Right, yeah. I, I know that it's going to do that when it exports. And I can that's take cool. a look at that surface and say, yeah, it's going to break this up into, into these forms and that's a I really like that. So right. I'm trying to use that to my advantage, and then also I'm using the the router bit, you know, just in a single pass. I could I could have gone back and done a finishing pass, that, you know, that would have made this surface completely smooth and and faceted. Yeah. But I was really interested in leaving these router lines and kind of what additional visual yeah. interest that gave to the piece. Well, I think I think some of the things that are neat about this, what you're doing overall is number one, you commented. On exploring design right, so yeah. kind of a lesson for the viewers explore design push your limits and find out what works what doesn't because um, you've learned a lot of lessons off this piece oh, yeah, I'm sure absolutely. I think what's really neat is the contrast 
that you're throwing out there. You have a contemporary piece that has natural live edge. It basically contrasts it against a machine surface. Right. Um, uh, uh, the digital against the natural, which I think is really a pretty neat interpretation. So now, the are you? What's on the other side? You're just leaving that smooth. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm really torn about whether I should. You know, this this particular tree has got really beautiful figure all throughout the yeah, tree. Yeah, it does. And I have some of that preserved here as useful surface on the top of the table. And I, I think I'd really like to leave some of that, you know, beautiful grain on this side of the table exposed. As, yeah. You know, now it's like a Jekyll and Hyde right, you know, right. kind of table. Yeah. So, um, I, yeah, I think it actually adds a nice, you know, it sort of ends up being an asymmetrical design in effect because you got the texture right, yeah. on the side. You got, and of course, that you have a usable smooth surface. A circle on the top, and then and then uh, one smooth side. So I think that works out real well. Yeah. What I, what I love about a piece like this is, I mean, there's no, there's really no precedent. There's not a, a style that's holding me to say. Right. It has to be, you know, when you're done with it, it has to look like yeah. this, or it has to fit into this category. There's really, there's really no category that this fits into. It's it's a piece for an artist that's intended to be an artistic expression, right? With some thoughts and ideas, and you know, that's that's what we're getting here. We've got. You know some some basic proportion things you know that help you right. know, hold things every hold everything together yeah. but in terms of how the whole thing is detailed and how some of these you know pieces resolve themselves um, it's really it's really up to me and, and what feels best for right. how the pieces come together well that's cool I, I think one of the things you know you're pushing the envelope a little bit it's it's a uh, studio furniture yeah. so basically you you have a little bit more free reign right, yeah. um, with the design Yet at the same time, you know, it's not a free for all because that design can fail. And actually, you, you're producing some pretty neat little tables, and I, I love how you've taken basically your design from a simple table to, you know, some of them having the, the live edge on them to now this one's gone even further. So right, yeah. it's it's nice to see you explore the design, and it's it's one of the ways to push your creativity and continue to, to push it on out there. So, excellent. Good deal. Well, real quick, what what's your finish going to be? What's um, your choice finish? I'll, I'll be uh, probably spraying lacquer on this one just because of the, the nature of these grooves. Okay. Um, Any stain or no, dye? Be, be no, no stain, no, okay. no dye on this one. Um, so it'll just be the, the clear lacquer. And what what's the wood again? Uh, Box Elder. Box so, Elder, okay. Uh, so it's in the maple family. Oh, okay. Because this, this piece of wood actually looks very similar like I it looks like it could be maple it actually looks a lot like poplar with a lot of the color tones in it but then again you know by the way that it feels and the hardness of it it, it does more feel like maple yeah, there's some these these really uh persistent yellow streaks that run yeah. through the wood and my experience with those you know they're they're almost you know they're on the verge of like neon yellow yeah right well now. and that's why I thought it when I initially so I thought it was popular because of the coloring in it. Right, and those actually they'll pop when I put lacquer on it. Yeah. Um, and then over time, those have had a tendency to brown just a little okay. bit. You okay. Know? Okay. Yeah. A little I was kind of wondering over time uh, how that ages out. It's really a, it's really a pretty yellow wood yeah. overall. It is actually yeah. Well, cool. Well, thanks for sharing that with us. I yeah, appreciate absolutely. it. Thanks for so it. yeah. Well, there's a lot of lessons there for you guys. Uh, push your boundaries. Also, check out what was the. The, the uh, one that inspired yeah, you? Yeah, Jeff Martin Joinery. Jeff Martin Joinery. I've never heard of him. I'm going to have to run home now and look him up on the <laughs> on the internet. And we'll, when I do, I'll, I'll post the link in the video uh, and in the show notes too. Well, thanks, man. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Take care. All right. And then this guy's <clears throat> little dovetail. That's Lee Nielsen. That looks nice. How's yeah. that feel? Oh, I feel Feels What's really the deal, good. man? Feels really good. Well, I, you know, I'm not gonna. It's, it's sharp. Yeah. <laughs> so I make it. Oh, did you grind it off? Yeah, I grind. Oh, I grind okay. It off. Yeah. Oh, I see. I thought yeah, I thought it chipped, and I'm like, what are you doing with your tools? Well, they should be used. They should so, be. So yeah, you exactly. know. Actually, I like I like how rigid this one is. That's a really really great little, really great little saw. Nice. I like that one a lot.